Over the past few months, Ripple has achieved considerable success in its fight against the SEC. But few people know that there have also been many significant events unrelated to the SEC. Or you want to find out? Then stay with us and we will tell you everything. While digital assets like as XARP and Bitcoin are not intrinsically securities, they may be considered as such when traded in the main market, according to John Deaton, a proponent attorney for Ripple. This point of view opens the door to a resolution between Ripple and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. Deaton underlines the need of scrutinizing individual transactions in both primary and secondary XRP sales. Although digital assets are not in and of themselves securities, the individual circumstances of each transaction must be considered to decide if they may be categorized as securities. According to Deaton, digital assets like as XRP and Bitcoin do not fulfill the Howey test criterion for being called securities. In the context of an XRP sale, however, the asset may be viewed as a security during the transaction. As a result, both primary and secondary market transactions must be scrutinized by the SEC to establish their categorization. The attorney backs up his point by citing previous legal examples. He cites the SEC's EVs. Elbury case in which the court determined that secondary sales of Elbury Credits, LBC, Tokens should not be considered securities transactions. This discovery is significant because of its possible influence on the sex case against Ripple. If XRP is recognized as not being a security in and of itself but capable of being sold as one, the court battle's result may alter. Drawing similarities to the Elbury case, in which the SEC determined that secondary sales of Elbury coins did not constitute securities transactions, a settlement with comparable ramifications for Ripple appears more possible. This development may be seen positively by Ripple and XRP enthusiasts. In a prospective settlement, XRP may be regarded a security only in primary transactions done by Ripple and its executives, while secondary market sales may be excluded. This discrepancy has major ramifications for Exerpsur's regulatory position in trading. In a recent video, noted crypto influencer Ben Armstrong, also known as BitBoy, disclosed the number of XRP or Ripple network tokens that a crypto investor needs own in order to achieve billionaire status. According to Armstrong, a crypto enthusiast has to own 150 Gripple coins to become an XR billionaire. The crypto influencer's opinion, as expected, sparked a flurry of replies from the community. Some individuals ran surveys to elicit the collective knowledge of the crypto community, anxious to learn more about the subject. Jenna, a well-known XRP influencer, conducted a survey that drew a sizable response from XRP supporters. Surprisingly, most respondents believe that becoming a billionaire requires much less than 150k XRP units Furthermore, although 62.5 of respondents believe they need less than 150 XRP, the runner-up group with 22.6 votes believes 150 key is enough. However, Armstrong issued a word of caution, emphasizing the need of taking a cautious approach in the aftermath of a poll result. BitBoy's remarks followed his own estimate that 150 key CRP would make one a wealthy. In light of the outcome, Armstrong warned against being too aggressive with forecasts, emphasizing the potential damage such overzealousness might cause people. He took lessons from the last bull run and underlined the significance of adopting a more cautious outlook. While bold projections may be appealing, he cautioned that they might lead to false expectations and possibly harm investors. I learned one thing from the last bull run. Being more conservative never hurt anyone, he remarked. Predictions that are excessively forceful may harm individuals. Notably, for 150 XRP to make one a millionaire, the currency must trade over $6.07 and 150 XRP now costs almost $65 at the current price of 4,271 cents. In contrast to BitBoy's proposal of 150 crypto enthusiast, Edward Farina gave an optimistic outlook on XRP claiming that owning 10,000 XRP tokens may lead to financial independence.
Crypto Basic previously reported on how prominent Bitcoin trader Nebraskan Gunnar mocked BitBoy for his XRP millionaire advice. Gunnar uploaded a copy of an article and emphasized the two processes outlined by BitBoy, which involved generating a token and selling it for $1 million in extra pay. While Gunnar's insult had nothing to do with the story, his attention was drawn to BitBoy's recent affiliation with the recently created Ben Meme currency, implying that BitBoy will rug, pull the Bencoin project as some others have indicated. The Metal Blockchain team announced on May 11 that the next quick payment service, FedNow, would be linked to Metal Blockchain. Using FedNow's Send and Receive feature, Metal users will be able to rapidly convert money to stablecoin and back. FedNow and Metal Blockchain's partnership exemplifies the growing convergence of conventional financial institutions with blockchain technology. Metallic Blockchain, created by Metallicus, is a cryptocurrency network based on a fork of the Avalanche algorithm. It was created to give developers of decentralized finance, DeFi, with compliant solutions. The Metal creators stress that the network is built on Bank Secrecy Act, AXA, compliance confirming their dedication to identity verification and anti-money laundering, AML, safeguards. Metal Blockchain has a subnet dubbed X-Chain, which allows developers to add restrictions for asset transfers. For example, a token might be created with certain constraints, such as being transferable exclusively to us, residents, or having a trade delay until the next day. While the specific criteria for FNAO integration are unknown, Metal's adherence to regulatory requirements is likely to have contributed to its selection as one of the first blockchain networks recognized as a FedNo service provider. The integration of Metal blockchain to FedNow offers new possibilities for the construction of linked bank chains. This enables the development of a larger blockchain ecosystem that maintains security and reduces dependency on Oracle. While remaining linked to the FedNow system, banks may interact with one another to simplify payment processing and settlement. Furthermore, this integration prepares banks for the possible adoption of a central bank digital currency, KeyZebSu, as well as the issuing of bank, issued stablecoins that may interact within the stablecoin currency basket. Despite the potential benefits of FNAO and Metal Blockchain integration, some U.S. politicians, including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and U.S. presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr., have expressed concerns about privacy implications and see it as a step toward a blockchain. Based TBC, the Federal Reserve, on the other hand, has clearly rejected any connection between FNAO and a CBC. Metallica's co-founder and CEO Marshall Hayner downplayed Siebkees' criticism, arguing that the same degree of scrutiny provided to the conventional banking system will be offered to CBTC. He feels that the issue surrounding CBCs is unwarranted, and he believes that integrating metal blockchain with FNAO would strengthen the current financial infrastructure, enabling safe and quick payment processing between banks. Finally, the collaboration between FedNow and Metal Blockchain represents a significant advancement in the field of quick payments and decentralized finance. This connection enables users to change between cash and stablecoins in real time, opening the path for greater accessibility and efficiency in the financial sector. Metal Blockchain's compliance, friendly approach, and the possibility of linked bank chains illustrate the growing convergence of existing banking institutions with blockchain technology which will eventually shape the future of digital payments.